So we've got the DSP connected to our app and we're ready to start um, adjusting the DSP's output. One of the first things we do is um, check and see that the DSP is in fact programmed correctly and that our amps are outputting to the right channel. To do that, we hit the identify button. And what this is gonna do is send a chime to the front left speaker of the vehicle. This is gonna confirm that in fact the DSP is processing the audio and outputting a signal. From there, we can go into outputs and we can select and program or allocate our output channels. This is where we can group them together as we discussed in part one. Um, and then of course we've got crossover adjustments. I can have my crossovers preset on my app through the DSP got my equalization adjustment, time delay, and then my input um, levels and adjustments. So at this point, we have, I've got a pink noise CD in the, uh, in the CD player, and we can start playing our pink noise. Now the track is uh, set on repeat, and uh, we can go through and the benefit behind uh, the DSP and the fact that this is a fixed level signal is we can go up in volume and then we can go down in volume. And we retain our volume control. There's no need for an external volume control or an external source to control your system's level. And that's truly the benefit of the DSP. And then uh, if we increase our volume again, and we're going to just mess around with our EQ, and you can hear the differences of our, us adjusting our EQ. We can always return it back to flat if we choose to. We can go in and we can adjust the crossover. And change our range of frequencies that the DSP operates at. Even go in and can delay our system signal to our speakers. Turn that back to normal without any kind of time on it. And let's see if we can adjust, like I was mentioning, we can adjust our left independently, our right independently, our rear left, and even our subwoofer which had, the amp has not been installed in the subwoofer yet. But when it does, we'll be able to control those low frequencies, um, just like we were in front, right, or front, uh, front and rear outlets. So you can also notice that we have the ability to increase the output of our channel and decrease the output of our channel. So you can see the installation of AX DSPX FD2 is relatively straightforward. Simple installation behind the, uh, the OE radio, removal of the OE amplifier, amp bypass harnesses, and all the accessories that go with it to make this installation quick and as easy as possible. No longer do you need to have external volume controls or external equipment like summing devices or any kind of product that fixes the OE curve on the output side of the factory amplifier. The DSP is going to take care of it all. It interprets that, the, the CAN bus information in this case and takes that fixed level audio out of the radio and converts it to a manageable signal that then you can manipulate through our free application, adjusting crossovers, equalization, time delay, and then saving this to the actual DSP. So with the rest of this installation here. I'm going to button all this up and uh, put the back panel together and this thing is ready to go. It's set up and um, 
you know, we're really excited about the product because it's going to save you time in the install bay. It takes away all of the guesswork, most of the troubleshooting, and it gets you to an end product, an end result that will ultimately save you time in the install bay. So if you'd like more information on the products that we have available in the DSP line, you can visit accessinterfaces.com to check out more information. So thank you.